Okay. So thanks, everybody. I'm going to be talking about the Kangaroo Island Koala Management Program, which Freya has just talked about, but I'll be talking about another couple of years' data as that builds on what she was talking about. Um, so just the program to start with, as Freya said, the aim is to conserve native vegetation by reducing koalas to a sustainable density. We estimate that's about 0.75 koalas per hectare, above which we start seeing over-browsing on the trees. We're not planning to wipe out koalas completely. It would be too big a task, but that is our goal, to get them under a sustainable density. And just a bit of background. Um, so down here in the southeast is the only place where koalas are native in South Australia, and all the other populations are introduced. The 18 koalas that were introduced to Kangaroo Island in the 1920s were introduced into Flinders Chase National Park and within 20 years over-browsing was noticed and there were various attempts to try and translocate them out of the park. The one in the 1940s to the Dudley Peninsula didn't work and we are still trying to keep them out of that, that area. We are aware people translocate, do their own translocations and we are aware that people in the Pelican Lagoon area are planting trees that are suitable for koalas, so where that was once a barrier, we, it's more possible now that they could move in. But we're trying to keep them out, Dudley Peninsula. The uh, koalas that were translocated to the Signet River in the 1950s, that translocation did work, and it's now one of our highest density populations on the island, and they're now spread all over the island except for the Dudley Peninsula. The first survey, island-wide survey, was done in 2001 and there was estimated 27,000 koalas that had arisen from those 18. Impacts of over-browsing, it reduces habitat for other fauna and it uh, reduces habitat and food and hollows. It also causes slumping of riverbanks when you lose the trees along the rivers and it affects the water quality in the rivers. Um, it, back in the 1990s, people were very worried about the tree death on Kangaroo Island. A task force was set up to advise the Minister of what to do. Culling was recommended as the most cost-effective management approach, but there was so much community rejection of that, um, not on the island, but more national and overseas rejection. It's now been prohibited as a management tool, and it's also prohibited in the national and state strategies. So the Kangaroo Island Koala Management Program was established in 1996 and it's based on sterilisation of koalas but we also do a lot of habitat restoration and monitoring. So since 1996 we've sterilised over 12,000 koalas. We've relocated 3,800 back to their native range in the southeast. We've been going for 20 years, every year since then. It's cost about $8.2 million. And we employ at the moment about 10 staff over the five month catch season over summer. And that's just showing our techniques, the arborist tree climbing method. We hold koalas in pens at the vets. It's a five minute surgical sterilization. We release the koala within 300 meters of where it's captured and habitat restoration there. Um, monitoring, we, we've got 12 photo points established uh, since 1997 that are giving some good information and we've, uh, so we're seeing tree condition improving in areas where management's been focused but, um, and we're also managing, uh, monitoring tree condition at 50 sites but I won't talk about that today. And with the habitat restoration we've planted over 15,000 trees and we put iron collars on trees, big old trees. Uh, to prevent them dying if they've been over-browsed. So just some data here from the Signet River. We've got the green bars are mean density of koalas. We've got number of koalas here and number of koalas per hectare, so mean density here. So just looking at the mean density, we've seen it significantly decli decline since 1996. But unfortunately in the last few years we're seeing an increase we had them down in this area below 0.75 koalas per hectare as an average, but they are steadily increasing. It wasn't, it's not just a blip, they seem to be on the increase, which I'll talk about more about later. 
Um, so we've had fluctuations in the number sterilised, and that's directly related to funding. We had a big blip here right at the start, um, blip here, 1,600 odd koalas sterilised. Um, and we also translocated a lot here. We're not translocating anymore, and that's re related to um, funding as well as the unsterilised koalas moving in from the southwest of Victoria. So we don't want to compound the problem that's happening now in the southeast. Um, uh, yes, and so and during this time too, we had drought, which we know affected their breeding back in um, these years. So this, all these together, could have been forcing this decline and there's, we're starting to get an increase. And so we've got a few emerging issues um, now. Our number one is koalas increasing in blue gum plantations. We've got 15,000 hectares of plantations on the island. We're also getting an increasing number of landholders restricting access for management for a variety of reasons. Um, but I'm going to be talking about the blue gum issue. And so the problem is we're getting koalas breeding up in pockets. We used to be able to manage around pockets where if a landholder restricted access, we could run around their property and manage on the outside and keep the pockets down. But we're getting more and more of these pockets building up. So, and blue gum plantations is one of these biggest pockets. So they were first planted on the island. Uh, most of them were planted in 2005. They became suitable habitat, big enough trees in 2008 for koalas. Koalas are very hard to catch in plantations and they're very hard to monitor in uh, plantations. So we can't use our normal um, arborist tree climbing techniques because there's no branches to hold the ropes. And we, so for the last couple of years, we've been trialling new methods, innovative methods. We did spotlight catching, some success, um, cage trapping, bit of success, um, and cherry picker. So, and this year we um, spent a week with a cherry picker in the plantation. So it's an expensive exercise because you have to hire a cherry picker. And it's also got limitations as well. There's only some, the trees are getting too tall for the cherry picker we've got on the island and we've bought bigger poles and everything, but the koalas shoot to the top. Um, and so it, it can be used in some areas, but not all areas. But also having said that, uh, that's another 15,000 hectares on top of the um, 54 odd thousand native veg we're trying to manage. So to add another 18,000, it's a huge problem. So in the blue gum plantations, we've got, we estimated, we've been doing some monitoring since 2010. This uh, year we had 19 sites. We estimated 1.77 koalas per hectare in the plantations. They are on the increase. Um, we got maximum densities of 4.7 koalas per hectare, which is like what they're getting in the southwest of Victoria with their plantations. Um, the densities in the blue gum plantations are higher than in our highest quality native veg. And if we extrapolate 1.7 koalas per hectare by 15,000 hectares, we're estimating there's another 26,000 koalas sitting in the plantations. And just to take a small, looking at it on a small scale, this is in the southwest. Um, we've got plantations here in the brown. We've got a landholder in the middle. We've got some restricted access properties around it. Um, so this is the number of koalas that were seen or caught on those two plantations back in 2013. Only two years later, this is how many um, were seen or caught. If you're the landholder in the middle, like he is, tearing his hair out, this was the number of koalas we caught on his property back in 2008. We went back there last year and caught that many. Mm -hmm. um, so we repeated the population estimate this year where we count koalas at over 100 sites. And this is just, this is the mean koala density in each of the four censuses that we've done. So back in 2000, Island-wide survey densities were up here. We've seen them decline in high quality habitat, declined in medium, declined in low. But this year they're increasing in all habitat quality types. So unfortunately we're seeing quite a significant increase here in koala densities. 
Have we achieved our goal um, to conserve the native vegetation by reducing it to sustainable density? Well, we've got some evidence for tree condition improvement. There are environmental factors that are implicated in that tree condition. We've seen mean densities decline, but in the last few years we've started to see them increase again. And if we'd done nothing, so um, it, the Otways example in Victoria is a really good example of what, what can happen and how quickly it can happen. Because um, koalas can double in four years if they're left unmanaged and good environmental conditions. In, t in the Otways in 2008, um, people noticed the over-browsing. They tried to get something done. It took a long, long time. And by 2014, only six years, the, um, it became a crisis intervention, so the area was declared an environmental emergency, and that's when they moved in and euthanised all those koalas. But in, by 2014, they'd lost half their money gum, and they had densities up to 22 koalas per hectare. So the next steps for us, um, we're going to be updating the model, which at the moment predicts that we should be sterilising 400 females a year, which is what we've been operating under. But the model doesn't um, include the blue gum, that extra 25,000 odd koalas that are breeding up in the blue gum. So we're going to be updating the model to include all that data and for another five years data. We're going to be reviewing all our options because it's um, quite a major issue with what's happening in the blue gums and how to manage them. So it's going to be a whole of agency and community approach moving forward. Thank you.